We shall now continue with our Bible prophecies. We will be looking around in Isaiah. The prophecy, the prophecy says, God is emptying Jerusalem and Judah of all the basic necessities. He's withdrawing the police and protection, judges and courts, pastors and teachers. He says, I'll put little kids in charge of the city. Basically, this is prophesying that Jerusalem will be in utter ruins and nothing will be doing well there. And this is fulfilled in Second Kings, where he says, He carried away all Jerusalem and all the mighty men of Val. None remains except the poorest of the land. Second Kings 24, 14. So Jerusalem is left desolate, just as the prophecy foretold. Still in Isaiah, our next prophecy. This is a messianic prophecy. When God's branch will sprout green and lush, the produce of the country will give Israel's survivals something to be proud of. This is Isaiah 4, 2. The good thing to be proud of is the Lord Jesus Christ. Israel could be proud of being the birthplace of God. Still in Isaiah. Doomed to you who buy all the houses, leaving everyone homeless and landless. Those extravagant estates will be deserted. A ten-acre vineyard will produce a pint of wine, a fifty-pound sack of seed, a quart of grain. Doomed to those who start drinking booze before breakfast and drinking themselves to a stupor. My people will end up in exile. This is Isaiah 5, 8, 13. So here it says that because of all the bad things the rich are doing, they will be exiled from the land. And this is fulfilled in 2 Kings, which says, So Judah was led away into exile from its land. This is by the Babylonians. This can be found in 2 Kings 25, 21. So we are going to split this next prophecy into multiple parts. This will be part of Isaiah 9. And the first part of the prophecy says, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. And this is fulfilled when Jesus went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zeppelin and Nephetai. This is in Matthew 4:13. So these cities, which have walked in darkness, have seen Jesus, which, in the prophecy, is the great light. The next part of the prophecy is the long piece of the prophecy. They are glad in your presence. The abuse of oppressors and cruelty of the tyrant is gone. As surprising and sudden as Gideon's old victory. For a child was born. He'll take over and run the world. His name will be Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. The child spoken of is Jesus. As God, he rules over the world. Thus, he will be taking over the world. The believers will be glad in his presence, especially when he brings them to heaven. And this is when the abuse of the oppressions, and the cruelty of the tyrant will be gone. This is all about Isaiah 9, 1 and 2. This one is another prophecy which shall be broken into multiple parts. It says, A green shoot will sprout from Jesse's stump. And this is fulfilled with a genealogy where Jesse the father of David, and after a long genealogy, there is Joseph the husband of Mary, and Mary, the mother of Jesus. This is in Matthew 1, 6, and 16. So the green shoot is Jesus, and it comes from Jesse's line of lineage. 
which is also David's line of lineage. The next part of the prophecy. The life-giving Spirit of God will hover over him. And this is fulfilled in Matthew, where it says, The Spirit of God descending above and lighting on Jesus. So the Spirit is now above Jesus, literally, and hovering over him like a dove. This is in Matthew 3, 16. Next piece of the prophecy, he won't judge by appearances. And this is fulfilled where people brought to Jesus all who were ill. So Jesus didn't really care how you looked. He would heal you if you were sick. And this is in Matthew 4, 29. Next prophecy, we are still in Isaiah. But not so with Jacob. He'll establish them in their own country. Outsiders will throw their lot with Jacob. So essentially, this is saying that people will favor the Israelites. And this is fulfilled in Second Chronicles, which says, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, The Lord has anointed me to build him a house in Jerusalem. Whoever there is among you of his people, may the Lord his God be with him and let him go up into the land. This is Second Chronicles 36, 23. So Cyrus is throwing his lot with the Israelites by allowing them to go back to their homeland and rebuild the temple of the Lord. Next prophecy. I will shatter the Assyrian who trespassed. I'll ban his taking of slaves and lift the weight of oppression. This is Isaiah 14, 25. This is fulfilled when the Lord sends an angel who annihilated every mighty warrior in the camp of the king of Assyria. This is in 2 Chronicles 32, 20. Isaiah says, Village R of Moab is in ruins, destroyed in a night raid. Village Kir of Moab is in ruins, destroyed in a night raid. Moab weeps and wails, the banks of Dibbon crests with blood, but God is worse and sore with Dibbon, a lion to finish off the fugitives. This is Isaiah 15. Here he is prophesying about the destruction of Moab. And this is fulfilled in the 14th century, where Moab is destroyed by Babylon. Still on Isaiah. Damascus undone as a city, a pile of dust and rubble. What's left of Aram? Not much. So this is prophesying against Damascus saying that it city will be left in ruins. This is Isaiah 17, 1 and 2. And this is fulfilled in the 7th and 8th centuries BC, where Damascus was destroyed. Continuing on with Isaiah. The king of Assyria is going to come and take the Egyptians as captives, and Ethiopians as exiles. He'll come and march them, naked and barefooted. So this is prophesying Assyria capturing Egyptians and Ethiopians. And this is fulfilled where in 671 BC, where Assyria conquers Egypt, and the Egyptians contained many Ethiopians. Thus, Egypt and Assyrians would be taken to Assyria as prisoners. Continuing on with Isaiah. Within one year, the arrogant brutality of Kedar will be over. This is Isaiah 21, 16. So it says that Kedar will be destroyed. 
and this is fulfilled when it says, This is what Adani says, Rise and attack Kedar. And this is Jeremiah 49, 28. Continuing on with Isaiah. As for the Moabites, they'll be treated like refuse, waste, thrown away as they will, they'll sink in the sewage. Isaiah 25, 10 and through 12. So basically, Moab is going to ruin. And this is fulfilled in 582 BC, where Moab is conquered by Babylon. That'll be the end of today's video. We will continue on with more Isaiah.